So good morning, Hollywood Press. It's uh, great to see all of you here this morning. Uh, Psalm 1014 says that God sees the trouble of the afflicted and he considers our grief and takes it in hand. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to uh, all of our mothers who are here in the sanctuary and those who are uh, joining us online. Uh, we want to say we appreciate you. Uh, we love you. We thank you for all the time and energy you have invested in our lives. Uh, mothers invest a lot of themselves in disciplining their children and trying to raise them right. For example, do you know what the mother spider said to her baby spider? She said, I think you've been spending too much time on the web. <laughs> Sean told me that was Charlotte's web. I don't know. <clears throat> This morning, as uh, we're continuing our series on Christ and character, we are talking about potential, <clears throat> which is something that our mothers try to draw out of us and help us to realize. In Adam Grant's book, Hidden Potential, he tells the story of a chilly spring weekend in 1991 where at a hotel in a suburb of Detroit, not far from where I used to live, they were hosting the National Junior High Chess Championships. The reigning national champs were an elite prep school from New York. Nobody was afraid of the raging rooks, who were a group of poor students who lived in a neighborhood ravaged by drugs and violence and crime. They had six black boys, one Hispanic and one Asian American. They all came from single parent homes. They were eighth and ninth graders at a public school in Harlem. Most had only learned to play chess in the sixth grade. Their team captain practiced by playing in a park with a drug dealer. But the Raging Rooks rose to the challenge. They started strong and going into the semifinals, they were in third place out of 63 teams. Their coach was their secret weapon. He was a Jamaican immigrant in his mid-twenties. He was on a mission to shatter stereotypes about what poor inner-city students of color could do. He understood that while talent is evenly distributed, opportunity is not. He could see potential where others had missed it and he was looking to grow roses in concrete. But his team started to slip. One player got beat, broke down in tears, and bolted from the room. Another player ended his game in a draw. They dropped from third place to fifth place. The coach reminded his players they could only control their decisions, not their results. To catch up, they would have to win their final four games and hope the teams ahead of them would lose. As the final round played out, the Raging Rooks managed to hold their own. Two players scored big checkmates. One ended in a draw. But in a major upset, their team captain beat the best player from the best team. To everybody's surprise, the top teams all faltered, and the Raging Rooks ended up in a tie for first place. 
In just two short years, a group of poor kids from Harlem had gone from novices to national champions. And the skills they developed along the way would eventually earn them much more than chess titles. Most championship chess teams are built by recruiting child prodigies and putting them through intensive training at an early age. But the coach of the Raging Rooks did just the opposite. He started coaching a bunch of middle schoolers who just so happened to be interested and available. One was the class bully. They were mostly B students who were not selected for any special chess aptitude. They didn't have any stars on the team. But their coach believed in them. He saw their hidden potential. He just had to figure out how to unlock it and nurture it and develop it. The Raging Rooks remind us you cannot tell where people will end up based on where they begin. Potential is not a matter of where you start, but how far you travel. For every Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart who makes a big splash early on, there are lots of Johann Sebastian Bachs who ascend slowly and bloom late. They are not born with invisible superpowers. Their gifts are either homegrown or homemade. They aren't freaks of nature, they're freaks of nurture. What counts is not how hard you work, but how much you grow. Character matters more than talent. This reminds me of the story we read earlier in Exodus chapter 3 about Moses. Moses had grown up in the palace of Pharaoh in Egypt. He had been a rising star with exceptional talent and intellect but he demonstrated a major character defect when he murdered a man and had to escape the country to save his life. He had spent the last 40 years as a shepherd out in the wilderness. Moses was basically a has-been. The people in Egypt probably reminisced from time to time about how great he had been and how great he could have been. They probably would have shaken their heads at someone who had squandered their opportunity and never developed their talent. Moses himself might have felt like a failure. His high school class probably voted him most likely to succeed. But his life didn't turn out that way. He was probably seen as a disappointment, the one who should have made it big, but never did. But God knew his potential better than anyone else. At 80 years old, Moses probably felt like he was past his prime. He may have felt like his life was over. But God was telling him, you're just getting started. The most important chapter in your life is still ahead of you. God's call to Moses from the burning bush was a call to draw out this potential that had always been there. And now it was time to put it to use. Drawing out his latent potential involved three things. Curiosity, a call from God, 
and compliance. First of all, Moses was curious. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 3, it says that Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why this bush does not burn up. He saw something that piqued his curiosity. And instead of ignoring it and simply going on his way, he interrupted his routine and he changed his schedule. At 80 years old, he was still interested in learning something new he had never seen. Moses was a lifelong learner. God got his attention through this mysterious burning bush that did not burn up. Has God been trying to get your attention lately? Have you been too busy to alter your schedule and check out something that God's been wanting to show you? Moses acted on his curiosity he changed course and decided to investigate. He wanted to learn something he didn't understand. And his curiosity was about to bring out his potential. Secondly, there was also a call from God. In Exodus 3, verse 4, God called to Moses from the bush. In chapter 3, verse 10, God called Moses to go back to Egypt and lead the Israelites out. God presented Moses with an opportunity. This was not an opportunity he had been seeking. He didn't apply for this job. He hadn't gone looking for it. But it came looking for him. God saw the potential in Moses when Moses could not see it in himself. And he was calling for the talents and skills and abilities he had given Moses, which had not been developed yet. Moses had been sitting on them. God gives every single one of us here gifts to use. He gives us resources to share. And he doesn't want us to hoard them and keep them to ourselves, but to invest them in others and give them away. He wants us to invest in our church, in our families, our schools, our neighborhoods, and our community, and our places of work. And every so often, if we are sitting on our potential, God will do something to catch our attention. God will call us to develop what he has already given us. Even though Moses was now a shepherd, God did not want him to be sheepish. God wanted him to be bold and step out in faith and take a chance. Moses was 80 years old, and God was calling him to do something he had never done before. During COVID, a lot of people in our country became too sheepish. They stayed inside their homes and only wanted to interact with people online or on Zoom. But most people will not develop their potential that way. God is calling every one of us to do something with what he has given us. So what is God calling you to do? And then thirdly, Moses ended up in compliance, although it took him a while to get there. In verse 11, Moses responded to God by saying, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and lead the Israelites out of Egypt? Moses was not a confident man. He didn't think 
he could do this. He thought it was over his head. But God knew his potential better than he did. And God knew if he would only give it a try, he would succeed. In verse 13, Moses objects a second time because he doesn't know God's name. In Exodus 4, verse 1, Moses objected a third time, wondering what to do if the people don't believe him. In Exodus 4, verse 10, he objected a fourth time because he was not a good public speaker. And in chapter 4, verse 13, Moses objected a fifth time and asked God to send somebody else. God didn't want to send somebody else. He wanted to send Moses. And Moses finally complied. Deep within Moses' heart, there was all this potential he could not see. He didn't think he had it in him. But he did. He just needed somebody to believe in him. God believed in Moses before he believed in himself. And he pulled all of this potential out of him that had been covered up by years of sand and sheep and sorrow. And so Moses, at the age of 80, developed into one of the greatest leaders in the history of Israel. When Moses was growing up as a young man in Egypt, he had the skill and the talent and the ability, but he didn't have the character. Now, after 40 years in the desert, he finally had the character. Helen Keller once said, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experiences of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. You can't develop character by being a couch potato. You can't develop your potential by being passive. You need to be curious hear the call of God, and comply with God's word. And you will learn to do things you never thought you could do. One of the challenges for moms and dads is to see the potential inside of us and try to nurture it and develop it and draw it out while we are growing up. This is one reason why we celebrate Mother's Day. This is why we want to stop and tell our moms, thank you. We appreciate you. Because our mothers often see our potential before we see it in ourselves. In Matthew 23, 37, Jesus says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Here Jesus is comparing himself to a mother hen who's wanting to develop the potential of her baby chicks but they won't listen to her. When God sent the prophets and sent his son, the people weren't curious. They didn't listen to the call of God, and they didn't comply. It's like when you plant a moso bamboo seed. You can water it for many months or even years without seeing a single sprout. It looks like nothing is happening until one day it bursts through the surface. And then in just a few short weeks, it can grow over 20 feet tall. 
What you could not see is that underground, the seed was sprouting roots and shoring up energy. And then this huge growth spurt suddenly takes place seemingly all at once. But the gardener knows that the bamboo has it in itself. The gardener knows the potential of the seed. And so she just keeps watering it and nurturing it and caring for it, seeing no results for a long period of time until finally that potential bursts through the surface. In John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, and my Father is the gardener. God sees your potential. And if you stay connected to the vine of Christ, the Holy Spirit will flow through you like the sap that flows through the vine, and one day your potential will emerge and be realized. My older son, Ryan, is going to come to visit me here during the first two weeks in June. And back at the first of the year, before I left to come here, he gave me this cool-looking compass. He gave me this because he knew I would be having new experiences, meeting new people, and going new places I had not been. It was a way to remember that we are navigating new roads and new experiences all the time. And it's a reminder we all need to keep reorienting ourselves so that we're moving in the right direction. At the beginning of our lives, our moms and our dads are like our compass. They steer us in the right direction. And as we grow up, if you believe in Jesus and if you read the Bible, they will steer you in the right direction. And God will draw out the potential that is inside of you that you didn't even know you had. Booker T. Washington once said that success is to be measured not so much by the position one has reached in life as by the obstacles overcome while trying to succeed. God may not remove the obstacles in front of you, but he may work through those obstacles to help you realize your potential. God may work through these obstacles to build up your character so that you can become the person he has called you to be. Here at Hollywood Press, we want to be the kind of church that nurtures people's potential. We want to encourage you to be curious about joining one of our existing ministries or starting a brand new ministry. We do not want to hold you back from ministering to others. We want to maximize your potential. Some churches like to say, no, we can't do that. They lack vision and imagination. I like to say, yes. Let's go on an adventure together and see where God might be at work in this place. Let's see if this will develop your potential and ours. The Raging Rooks were a group of inner city, low income kids from Harlem. Few people would have believed they had the potential to rise from rookies to national champions in just two years. But they had a coach who believed in them before they believed in themselves. He saw their potential and worked to draw it out. 
Moses was a forgotten 80-year-old man living somewhere out in the desert. He probably thought he was past his prime, that he had missed his opportunity. But God had different ideas. God could see the potential that was still there that just needed to be called out. Every single one of you here this morning has potential. It doesn't matter your age, your sex, your background, or your education. God has given you potential. How is he working to draw it out of you? We need our mothers and our fathers to believe in us before we can believe in ourselves. And we need to believe in our kids and our grandkids and our friends so that they can believe in themselves. God believes in you and he is working in your life right now to draw out something you may not even know you have within you. So don't sell yourself short. Don't put yourself down. And don't quit before you start. We can do great things for God. Let's be curious. Let's respond to the call of God. And let's comply with God's word. You never know how much potential God has really given you and where he might be leading us next. Let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for who you've created us to be. Sometimes it's easy to get down on ourselves, to think that we are losers, to think that we have not measured up to somebody else's standards. But you are the God who created us, and you are the God who believes in us, and you know better than we do what we can really do through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to step out in faith and to trust you with our lives and see where you are leading us and where you are leading our church to go next. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.